Very well, a very good afternoon to you and welcome to Opinion 2017. It's the first Monday since the historic Supreme Court ruling that nullified the results of the presidential elections following a successful petition by the petitioner, His Excellency Engineer Dr. Raila Amolo Odinga. And I'm joined in studio by two prominent Kenyans, one of those is a lawyer as well, and he was the senatorial candidate for the NASA coalition, none other than Wakili Edwin Sifuna. Good Karibu yeah. sana, Asante sana, and congratulations to your political team Thank as you. well. Thank you. We are also joined by Homer Bay Senator, who's also a lawyer and an IT specialist, Senator Moses Otieno Kajuan. Karibu sana mwishimi wa. I'm a lawmaker. Oh, you're a lawmaker <laughs> as well. <laughs> Should we stick to uh, Moses Kajuang or, uh, or we just stick to Otieno Kajuang? Otieno Kajuang will do. Otieno Kajuang will do. Yes. Very well. Karibu ni sana. Yes, this is Opinion 2017 and I sincerely thank you for finding time mm. to, to join us. Remember, you can share your comments, questions, views, and we'll be going through them real time. Now, on Friday, the historic ruling. Um, from a layman's perspective, I grasped two words. There were illegalities and irregularities. Uh, perhaps, Senator, what, what does, just break it down, um, perhaps to the layman's level, what does that precisely mean? Or what was really the contents of the ruling? Uh, thanks, Buggy. Yeah. Well, basically, what the Supreme Court said was that the body that was mandated to organize the elections did not do it in a manner that was consistent with the constitution, mm -hmm. consistent with the applicable laws. Mm -hmm. There were irregularities, there mm -hmm. were illegalities. And mm -hmm. where there's an illegality, mm -hmm. it means that someone needs to be persecuted for it. So mm -hmm. IEBC did not conduct itself and did not create an environment that could produce a free and fair outcome. If you recall, after the elections, we did our own tallies, and we as Nasserites, we were convinced that we got 8 million votes. <laughs> you and said what? That was as, as we as? <laughs> <laughs> I and, hear and, you. And, and you see, the kind of environment that IBC built is an environment that then subverted the will of the people, mm -hmm. and our 8 million votes were reduced to some odd 6 million votes. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the court said that the results that came out uh, uh, of, of IBC mm -hmm. declared by... Uh, the, the chairman of the IBC yes. results that are null and void because the process in itself was uh, irregular. Wow. Uh, but, but, Honorable Senator Sifuna, yes. um, there was a mention that the third respondent uh, was cleared of, of, of any wrongdoing. What, what did that precisely mean? Well, uh, what the court said is that they did not find any evidence of wrongdoing on the part of the, the third respondent. But of course, we know that uh, if there is wrongdoing yes. and you are the beneficiary of that wrongdoing, it is <laughs> impossible for us to, uh, you know, distance you from that particular... No, uh, Sifuna, okay. It's, it's In other fact. words, what are you saying? It's a fact. I'm, I'm saying if yes. there is wrongdoing somewhere yes. and you are the beneficiary of that wrongdoing... Of the wrongdoing, yes. yes. Buggy, that is why we have uh, a crime on our books called handling stolen property. You yes. are not the one who stole, but, but we have found you with stolen property. Yes. So you should tell us yeah. How you are somebody who, if interrogated well, will yes. tell us how the theft happened. Yeah, that is the truth. If interrogated, if well. interrogated well, you will tell us <laughs> why and how the theft happened because you are the beneficiary of the theft. And if you look at the two smoking guns that James Orenko presented to the Supreme Court yeah. on the eve of, uh, of our submissions, yes. remember there was a report by our IT experts yes. and there was another report by the registrar mm -hmm. that was summarizing the activities on the verifications of yeah. Forms 34A. Mm -hmm. The IT report, the footprints of Jubilee's chief agent were found in the servers. Who there was, was Jubilee's, one, uh, Davis Churchill. 
D. Chirchi was found to have logged into the servers. Into the IBC times, server? Into the Absolutely. IBC servers. And that is why when James Orengo presented the two reports to the court, Jubilee and uh, IBC lawyers were very strident in uh, objecting. Uh, and yeah. to a point where they were dismissed and were not considered as part of evidence. Well, yeah, we were evidence, told there were yes. servers that could not be accessed, some if, in if France. If evidence might, yeah. would have been accepted by the court, we would have found that the third respondent, their footprints were all over, and all these irregularities and illegalities mm -hmm. were committed to benefit them. Wow, so in this case, the third respondent is Uhuru Kenyatta. Yes. Um, just a quick one before we get into the thick of things. Katam, tweet you're saying, watching uh, with one hand pushing the walls of Jericho. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We will soon get there. We will soon get into Jericho. Uh, Anthony Muendwa. Tibim, Dani Kabisa. I mean, this Tibim thing is not going away. <laughs> now, uh, gentlemen, prior to the ruling, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta did mention that we as citizens and he was also addressing the NASA coalition leader, Ray Laudinga, need to respect the, the ruling of the court. However, things did change immediately after the ruling. Let's just have a look at the first clip where he was urging Kenyans in general to respect the ruling of the court. Sheria, iwe ni nzuri wakati na kupendelea, lakini ikichukua hatua ambaye haikupendezi, huipendi. We can't work like that, my brothers and sisters. We must be a nation that follows the rule of law. Sharia follows the rule of law. Very well. That was before the ruling. Now, after the ruling, this is what transpired. Have a look. I personally disagree. Disagree with the ruling that has been made today. I disagree with it. And six people have decided that they will go against the will of the people. I personally... Wow. So, b before I get into that, Nick Beda is saying, hey, hey, Sifuna, handling stolen property. Well, that seems to have, uh, to have sunk in. I mean, what changed? I thought we, we have become accustomed to accepting and moving on with the rulings of the court. We have seen uh, President Kenyatta uh, saying before that we should accept. Then immediately after, he seems to be alluding to the fact that uh, the, I mean, six people just subverted the will of the, of, of the people. Uhuru Kenyatta is a case study in confusion. He's the one who uh, uh, prodded us and uh, kept cajoling us to go to court and yes, told us to get that. off the streets. Yes. Uh, irrespective of the fact that going to the streets, peaceful protest is a right that is protected by the Constitution. Right. Uh, it's a discussion for another day because yes. body bags have been found in Lake Victoria. Most so unfortunate. we went yeah. to court and he told us, uh, in fact, he talked about our wonderful Constitution. I think there's a tweet which he called, yeah. in which he called our Constitution a wonderful Constitution. Yes. Now that the Supreme Court has decided to stand with Kenyans mm -hmm. against Jubilee, yeah. he now finds fault with, with, with the judiciary. And it is not that six people have subverted the will of Kenyans. Six people at the Supreme Court have stood with Kenyans. It is mm -hmm. six people at the IBC that was in the process of subverting the, wheels, the will of Kenyans. Right. We need to place a finger in the right, uh, you know, in the right uh, box. Mm -hmm. The Supreme Court stood with Kenyans. The few people at IBC tried to subvert the will of Kenyans. Sifuna, is the president out of order? He's extremely out of order. And, uh, you know, one of the things that we have seen Uru take very lightly is mm -hmm. the oath that he took. Uh, to defend the constitution that uh, you know got him into the office in the first place. Mm -hmm. He has taken that oath extremely lightly. He thinks it's a joke mm -hmm. that you as a head of state are supposed to be the person endorsing the principles in our constitution. Right. That you are the one who's, be, who's supposed to be at the forefront of, uh, of uh, defending the rule of law in this country. Mm -hmm. But you see, it is really uh, expecting too much from Uru Kenyatta. If his conduct in the past four years is anything to go by, mm -hmm. this is somebody who has repeatedly violated the constitution. 
and we blame his so-called tyranny of numbers in the previous uh, uh, National Assembly and mm -hmm. even in this one, mm -hmm. because they removed as a reality the specter of impeachment of a president. So that even when yeah, he because was subverting the, the Constitution numbers, yeah. by refusing to obey the court order on the teacher's pay, for instance, yes. and it was not the only one, even on the police recruitment, when uh, the court came out very clearly, mm -hmm. and he rubbished and distanced uh, himself from, from, from that court order. I mean, mm. So this is somebody who we have very little expectation in terms of, uh, of, of rule of law, and you could see that the initial time when he spoke at State House, he was just pretending. The real Uhuru Kenyatta is the one you saw at Bama. Somebody is saying, Sifuna uh, Bravason Mkenya, Sifuna, please go to court. We want you in Senate. Hatutaki 54%. Uyo kifaranga wa Senate ya Nairobi, tumesha sema na yeye pia atanaswa. Very well. Now, it appears that, that there's, it's becoming personal between him and, 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 and um, the Chief Justice. Let's just have a look at the clips. Let, let me have the first clip that um, he actually did mention the Chief Justice uh, in Burma. Have a look at this. Mm. <laughs> Sasa mimi sana sio rais mtarajiwa. Mimi ni rais ambao ni rais ajue ya kwamba sasa ana na rais ambaye anakalia kiti. Hapo awali period. This must be the clip where he was uh, scratching an itch. And yeah. I don't want well, to take it very seriously. I, I didn't see that part uh, of scratching. <laughs> <laughs> Atwoli, none other than Atwoli, the Secretary General of Kotu, yes. requested the President to sober up a little bit yeah. for mm -hmm. us to take him seriously. Mm -hmm. You know, he, uh, for a President who symbolizes uh, the, uh, the values of the mm -hmm. nation, who's mm -hmm. supposed to inspire national unity, to go out and lash out at an arm of government in that particular manner, and uh, by extension even call them Wakora, is yeah, extremely I mean, it's, it's, unfortunate. Yeah. And we are seeing the makings of a Donald Trump in Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's the next day that he went ahead and said that there is a problem. And Bagge can tell you, yes, there is a problem. The problem is Jubilee. The yeah. problem is Uhuru Kenyatta, if he gets another term, if this is seduction period, yeah. and he's behaving in the manner in which he's behaving, you can imagine how it will be. <laughs> no, no, no. You know, <laughs> I like the analogy. <laughs> Did you have to use seduction? <laughs> you know, two, two things came out very clear yeah. in that particular yeah. clip. First of all, we have known for a long time that uh, Uru Kenyatta does not understand the Constitution. He has absolutely no grasp mm -hmm. of the, uh, the Constitution. It is well uh, stipulated in the Constitution mm -hmm. that... If you are a president and you go into an election, mm. you will remain president until the day that somebody else is sworn in. I mean, sworn in yeah. So this issue of amekalia, ajakalia, amesimama, ajasimama, it shows you very clearly that he does not understand the constitution. Number two, there is one issue that Kenyans are pretending to be blind to. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to say it. But you see where I come from? We are not afraid. We are saying the person we saw at Bama, mm -hmm. the demeanor, the mm -hmm. language, mm -hmm. the fact that he could even, uh, he was not in control of his limbs, they could do whatever it is they wanted, is inconsistent with a person who is sober. I am saying the person who saw at Bama was under the influence of something. Okay. And he needs, we need to, be, to make it very clear because Sifuna. it is an embarrassment Sifuna. to the office of a president. Because let me tell you, Bani, mm -hmm. the Constitution says that a public office yes. is something that needs to be exercised in a manner that shows respect to the, to the people yes. and yeah. to the office. Yes. Yeah. Was that respectful to the people? A president, sitting president.